Harden means to this team. One thing is for certain, there was a bona fide superstar taken away from the Sixers in Ben Simmons. They need a superstar back, and they got one. They got a former MVP. They got an all-star this season, one who won't play in the game coming up on Sunday, but certainly an all-star. And they got a guy who can create his own offense. They got a guy who can play a little bit of defense, contrary to popular belief. He can get his rebounds where he can. He's got his assists are uh, eight per game, which is pretty good. What's it, what has fallen off for uh, James Harden this season is his scoring average. His points per game, which for his career is 25 plus, but for this season is at 22. So he's a little off there, but we all know that he did not want to play in Brooklyn. Might have wanted to play with Kevin Durant, but Kyrie Irving was a different story. And there are reports coming out that a couple of weeks ago when Kyrie Irving sat in front of his locker in the Nets practice facility and started burning a little sage in front of his locker, that James Harden looked at Kyrie Irving as if he had three heads. And that might have been the final straw for James Harden. I, I really can't play with a guy who's going to light some sage up in front of the locker room, regardless of what good vibes he thinks that's bringing to him and to the team. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how all of this plays out, but one thing is for certain, uh, the Sixers now can be expected to compete, really compete for a spot in the conference finals. In fact, there are many who opine that should the Sixers fail to get to the finals, it will be an unsuccessful season given what this trade will bring in. And now you've got Paul Millsap in there. He's certainly not the size of Andre Drummond, who was one of the top rebounders coming off the bench in the NBA, but he is a guy who can bang the boards, can get you rebounds, can get you some points, and maybe spell Joel Embiid just a little bit. How they're going to construct this offense, the Sixers, remains to be seen because you got to get Harden in there in the first place, and uh, we don't know yet when that is going to be. We are still awaiting James Harden, but in case you missed it, we are going to run back Ben Simmons' media availability. This happened 40 minutes ago, and we'll, we'll show this to you up until James Harden et al. emerge and are ready to tell their side of the story, if you will. So here's, James, uh, here's Ben Simmons from about 40 minutes ago. Hey, Ben, uh, what's the ramp up process been like for you? And, and when do you anticipate being able to participate in games? Yes, yeah, so I don't have a date yet, um, but I'm working towards, you know, getting back on the floor. Um, and yeah, so no date yet, but, you know, I'm, I'm starting to ramp it up. Hey, Ben, um, was there anything this season that could have changed your mind and got you to play again or was your mind made up and, you know, until you were out of Philadelphia, you were definitely not going to play again? For me, it was just making sure mentally I was right to get out there and play again. So that's something I've been, you know, dealing with. Um, and it wasn't about the fans or coaches or comments made by anybody. It was just a personal thing for me. Um, that was earlier than, you know, that that's, that series or, or even that season that I was dealing with. Um, you know, and that organization knew that. So it, it was something that, you know, I, I continue to deal with. And, you know, I'm getting there and getting to the right place to, you know, get back on the floor. Hey, Ben, there was so much like sourced reporting around everything going on with you. So I guess just so you're saying that the, the mental health issue preceded you requesting the tree uh, in the off season. Okay. I guess, can you just shed a little light on the timeline? And everything? Yeah, for me, it wasn't, that was never, the mental health has nothing to do with just the trade. You know, it was, it was a bunch of things that I was dealing with as a person in my personal life that I don't really want to go into depth, to depth with. Um, but yeah, I'm here now. So, you know, it's a blessing to be, you know, uh, in an organization like this. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting back on the floor and, and building something great here. First off, welcome to Brooklyn. Uh, for you personally, moving forward, I'm curious what the kind of things are, if you can even quantify them, have to happen, I guess, for you to be in the right headspace, to be out on the court and competing. Just staying on top of what I need to stay on top of um, and being consistent with that is getting to the place where I can do that.
Hey, Ben, I wanted to ask you um, a couple of things. When you played your last game with the Sixers, what was going through your minds? What were your last emotions? Uh, and what was the straw that basically snapped that made you say, it's time to go? Um, I don't think it was really that. It was more so just a, it was just piled up. A bunch of things that have gone on over the years to where I just knew I wasn't myself and I needed to get back in, into that place of, you know, being myself and, and being happy as a person um, and taking care of my well-being. Um, and that was like, the, that was the major thing for me. Um, it wasn't about the basketball, it wasn't about the money, anything like that. Um, you know, I want to be who I am and, and get back to, you know, playing basketball at that level and, you know, being myself. And the like, last game? Last game. Yeah, what's the kind of what was going on through your mind after the last game? Um, that I need to get in a good place mentally, honestly. Um, that was the main thing. And when you look at this roster, the makeup of this team, there are times where you could be on the floor with KD and Kyrie. You could be out there without either one of them. How do you see your, how do you see your role in fitting in and or what kind of conversations have you had with Steve about uh, what that would be? Yes, I think it's just staying aggressive, playing to – to my strengths and that's, you know, being a playmaker and making the right plays, um, setting my guys up and then defensively, obviously, um, locking down who I need to lock down. Um, so I'm excited to, you know, get in the floor with these guys is incredible team, incredible talent. So, um, super excited. That was Ben Simmons from approximately 1130 this morning. And now ladies and gentlemen, we welcome Paul Millsap, Daryl Morey, James Harden, and there is, the principal owner of the Philadelphia 76ers, Josh Harris, as now formerly Doc Rivers, the head coach, as formerly Daryl Morey introduces James Harden. Let's listen. Great. Uh, great day for Philly. Excited to be here. Excited to welcome James and Paul. This is going to be awesome. Um, you know, James, thank you for choosing Philly to play. You know, players like James don't come along every every day. So, like, the fact that he's here is a testament to everything that's been built, um, starting with Joel's MVP caliber play and what he's been doing and growing into. And then, obviously, the leadership around me with Doc and Daryl and Elton. And so thank you, everyone. And, look, the only last thing I'd say is that I uh, very much appreciate uh, Ben, what he did, Seth, uh, Andre, the contributions to Philly, um, and we wish them well. But now uh, let's do this thing. Thank you. We're very excited. Um, look, uh, Josh and ownership um, have been behind Doc and uh, the front office um, 100 to do whatever it takes to put us in the position to, to uh, as Doc says, be the winner. Uh, win the last game of the season. Um, you know, we've we've all worked tirelessly. I'd you know, I'd like to also thank Ben and, and Seth and Andre um, uh, for their contributions. You know, Doc and the coaching staff and and the players have put us in a spot where, uh, as we make this trade, we we are well positioned to to go on a run uh, and a run that hopefully excites you know the the city of uh, Philadelphia. Um, with Paul, um, he's someone Paul knows that uh, we were talking to this off season and, and hoping to acquire. Um, so it took us a little time, but uh, we're really excited about what he, what he can bring. He's a very versatile player. Uh, and then, uh, you know, as Doc said a couple days ago, uh, when he was looking at the team, he was, we've been looking for a player with a particular set of skills that he's, developed over uh, over his career and and James uh, and James Harden so uh, having two uh, an MVP and then a guy who's on pace to probably be the MVP if he can keep it up um, is really exciting um, all the hard work happens from here we haven't accomplished anything yet um, and I love that uh, you know the docs as a champion you know is here to lead us so um, Turn it over to questions. Oh, Doc, sorry, my bad. Uh, no, well, ditto, really. I don't have a lot to say. I mean, I think you guys would rather ask uh, questions except for uh, I'll start off with thanking Ben and Seth and um, uh, Drum. I mean, they all were, were great, uh, each one of them. Uh, enjoyed coaching all of them. Um, 
you know, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to come here, as Josh knows in our interview, is that um, we would make a commitment to win uh, and being a winner. Um, and we talked about it. You know, uh, we can do a lot of winning or we can try to be the winner. And uh, being the winner is hard. Uh, and that's what we want to become. Um, and that's why we make trades like this, going out and getting Paul and James. Uh, we want the opportunity to be the winner. And we believe that this trade does that. How y'all doing? Welcome to Philly. James, this question is for you. I guess it's a two-part question. Why did you want out of Brooklyn, and, and why did you want Philadelphia to be your destination? Um, originally, you know, when I was going through everything I was going through uh, you know, in Houston, uh, Philly was my, you know, my first choice. Uh, it just didn't happen. So 